Ush. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Sanukas Rule Skills and Drills. Today, we will be interviewing Grandmaster David James concerning the truth of Vijitsu. Part 1 and Part 2. When Part 1 is over, stay tuned. Part 2 begins right away. Enjoy. Ush. Ush. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in again to another Sanukas Rule Skills and Drills interview dedicated to the name, the legacy of Dr. Moses Powell and Sanukas Rule Jiu-Jitsu. Today, we have a very, very, very special guest, the inheritor of the honest Jiu-Jitsu, Grand Professor V's Choice, Grandmaster David James. Today, he's going to share with us some of the history, some of the teachings of Grand Professor V. He's going to share with us his beginnings, his trials and his tribulations, what he went through when Professor V handed the system over to him and give us some great history and some stories about Dr. Moses Powell and some of the other masters in our family of jiu-jitsu, which includes the honest jiu-jitsu, the son of the Jiu-Jitsu. Well, thank you, sir, thank for you. being here. Appreciate thank you very guests. much. So, my first question basically is, how did you get started? in the martial arts. How did you, you know, just tell us your beginning. What, how did it happen? Well, the first thing that I uh, would like to say, first of all, thank you. Yes, and I also would like to say everything that I do, everywhere I go, every seminar I teach, I always let people know that I represent Professor for Render Presentation. Yes, I represent Professor, okay? The way I got started in the martial arts it was like everybody else, basically, you know, who was in dudes with, you know, Kato, the Green Hornet, martial arts, you know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. you know, martial arts, kung fu movies. And uh, then I wanted to study martial arts, but my family was very religious. So they did not think that that was wise to do because it involved, in, in their eyes, violence and fighting. Yes, sir. So what happened was uh, we just forbidden to do it. There used to be a dojo uh, across the street from where I lived, a general by the name of Archie Rowland, who used to hold tournaments at Bishop Ford High School back in the uh, 70s. So I used to sneak across to his dojo while I was delivering groceries. I was supposed to be at my little job yes, delivering groceries, and I hit a key in a friend of mine's house, and I would go take a class for an hour and then go back and deliver groceries, and that's how I started. That was my first, you know, touch to martial arts. Yes, my mom found out because the lady who owned the laundromat was a friend of hers, and she went in there and said, you know, your son does really well in, <laughs> in martial arts. Exposed you, huh? Yeah, and she basically <laughs> gave me up. Yes, sir. You know, and then when I went home, and she was telling the lady, my son don't do karate. He only has to Her son went to the school, <laughs> and it was an inner dojo, like tournament type of class, and I right. did one. Right. And so she exposed me, and yes, I got sir. punished for not doing it. And then my mom told my dad, well, look, no harm came to it. The boy's been doing it. Let him continue. Very good. Nice. Nice. You know, <laughs> and then, so I started that way. But my serious, my serious uh, journey into the martial arts was when I sought out uh, Professor Nico Gunn. Yes, sir. And yes, it's sir. an interesting story, the way that came about. Okay. If you have the time, I would like to tell you. Uh, sure, sure. I and, know, I know, uh, Grandmaster Rico guy. And, you know, he just passed, yes. in the Kobe Right. And, uh, that was my really first instructor. Yes, sir. Okay? Uh, but I came to him by accident. And the reason why was I was looking for a school at the time. So, like everybody else, and this also was my first exposure to Dr. Pop. Yes, sir. Okay? What do you do? You get all the martial arts magazines, you know, your martial arts enthusiast, so you buy the magazines. I'm looking in the magazines, I see Professor Lionel Duncan. Yes, sir. Okay. I see at the time, you know, Grandmaster Moses Powell, which there wasn't Grandmaster at the time, right, but, right, right. you know, I see Master Grandmaster Moses Powell, and also, of course, the Black Dragon, Ron Van Cleef. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go like all I'm gonna to go to everybody's dojo and make a decision yes, sir. who I wanna study with. Mm -hmm. So what happened was 
first person I went to was Professor Duncan. Yes, he was not taking people in at the time. Oh. Okay? Because yeah. he had a very private thing going on. Yes, sir. And if it wasn't uh, invitation only, yes, sir. you wasn't getting, you know, he wasn't just uh, taking okay. people That's off the street. That's interesting. Yes, he sir. He was not taking people off yes, the street. Sir. Yes, sir. You know, because it's, at the time, it was around the time when his wife had passed, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't know that at the time. Yes, sir. But, you know, he just kind of just worked with the students he had. Yes, sir. So then I went to seek out Ron Van Cleef. Yes, sir. So now, Ron Van Cleef, for those people who remember this, he was used to work out of the back of a gym on 2nd Avenue and 13th Street, a weightlifting gym. Yes, sir. He had a school in the back. So I went there a few times to uh, go look at his classes. And while I'm going to look, while I'm looking at his class, I just kept going back yes, sir. to see his class. And he got pissed off at me for just coming and looking. Literally in the middle of a session, he's teaching class. I'm sitting on the edge of my chair like this. I'm watching, he gets up, he goes, you, get up, get up. And I'm like, I just shocked, you gotta understand, I'm just a young guy. Yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, get up. You came here to steal. Mm. Get up. Come here again, I'll break you up. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? And literally, he <laughs> literally threw me out. We laugh about it now. Right, yeah. right. We laugh yes, about sir. it yes, now, sir. you know, yes, when we see each you know, when we often see each other. But he threw me out of his program. Yes, sir. You know, yes, before sir. I made a decision. Right. And then so now you have Nisei Goju, and I'm looking in the magazines and and you say Goju, you know, we had guys that came out in Nisei Goju, which is Rob Van Cleef. You know, yes, you remember at the time, you know, Professor Nico Guy. Yes, sir. Ron Taganashi. Mm -hmm. Okay, you had uh, Takazuru. Yes, sir. All came out of Nisa. Yes, sir. That's okay, right. uh, Frank Woods, soldier. That's good history, though. Very, Very good history. Yes, yes. Professor Rodan, Wilfredo Rodan, who also passed away recently. And uh, I said, okay, well, next step is Professor Rico Guy. Yes, sir. Who was a professor at the time, but you know, we go got. Yes, sir. Went there, we hit it off, and I started training. And that's how I started training. I started training. I always worked extremely hard. He took to me, and then he had, a, he had an instructor by the name of Doc Williams. And Doc was legendary for his workouts, and people would literally look in the door as Doc teaching, and certain people wouldn't hang because he, it, right? he was that, yes, you know, sir. that aggressive yes, sir. in his training. So, Sheon Howard, who's right there, Master Ron Howard, Sheon Howard was also a student of Black Belt at the time with Sensei Donnie Collins, who was also there working out with Professor Rico Guy. And they took to me because I used to work hard. Yes, sir. So, I was the only one, one of the few people with me, Angel, or another gentleman by the name of Leroy, that when Doc was teaching, would participate in his class. And everybody, literally, everybody else would just. Once we go turn the class over to him, people wouldn't, wouldn't train. Right, right. Too intense. Way too intense. Yes, sir. Way too intense. Yes, sir. So they took a liking to me because of I was willing to participate. Gotcha, gotcha. And then Professor was teaching at the time on Remsen Street, just on the weekends, mm -hmm. Professor V. Yes, sir. And Sean Howard was the one who brought me down, said, you like to train, let me take you somewhere. Because that was seven days a week. That was on seven days a week. Yes, sir. He said, let me take you somewhere. You know, come with us. And they took me down, and that's how I met Professor V. Now, was Sheon Howard also training with Professor V at the time? Or he just Sheon thought Howard you was would training, work out there? Sheon Howard was training with Professor V. Guy. Mm -hmm. And on the weekends, all going down to Professor V. Wow. Because Professor V had an open class for, for black folks. Yes, sir. And that's where I met at the time, they don't remember me. They, you know, I was just a kid. Yes, I was sir. in the back of the room. Yes, sir. But that's when I met now Soke Little John. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Moses Powell had just left New York. Yes, sir. He just left New York, so I missed him, mm -hmm. right? But we, when he came back, we, we did get acquainted afterwards. Yes, sir. So then uh, I met Little John, Master Little John Davis, uh, Lou Ferriff. Pop Edwards, Danny Paolo, Jonathan Stewart, and a bunch of other, everyone who was everyone in Jiu-Jitsu yes, was there at the time. Yes, sir. Because that's what, you know, they all were coming out of the first yes, week. Sir. And that continued. And what I did was, every weekend, 
I train with Professor V, and we could guide during the week, seven days a week. Yes, sir. Okay, and that's why it was. That's how I got started with Professor V. Okay, well, let me ask you this. You said that you were known for hard training, and you love the rigorous training, and they took a liking to you, yes. so they turned you over to Professor V. How, were, how was the training, and how was the structure of the class with Grand Professor V? Was it just as rigorous as what you came from? Tell us, just give us an idea of how it was to have be in the classroom uh, okay, with Grand Professor I have v. to take a step back. Yes, sir. The reason why I trained so hard was because I got beat up by mm. near death. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. And I went seeking a good instructor in martial arts because I never wanted that to happen again. Yes, sir. That's right. So I said, I really wanted to. I was super motivated. Yes, sir. So I trained like crazy. Yes, sir. When I used to go home, my own family would go, what the hell are you training for? Some kind of war? <laughs> because I would train in the dojo seven days a week, right. go home and train again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. But what happened to me, I said, that ain't never happened again. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. I made some bad mistakes that had bad information. Mm -hmm. And I said, that never happened to me again. Yes, sir. Okay? Also, that's also one of the things that made me gravitate to Vijitsa. Because what happened, I'll make a long story short, was I was doing the Goju Karate. Yes, sir. Professor Rico guy had an accident. He was a locksmith by trade. He had fell off, I think, a ladder, hurt his back. Yes, sir. When he hurt his back, because of the way I love training, he was the one who actually said to me, you know, you need to go to visitation because he wasn't able to train the way he was able to train. Because of, because of the injury. Because of the injury. Yes, sir. So he said, he pushed me toward Professor V. And uh, what happened was, I was in an elevator and this guy tried to mug me in an elevator. Mm -hmm. Now, one of them old elevators that were four by six, the door closed, another door closed, and right. that was it. Double door, yes. Right, sir. double yes, door, six flights up, you know? So this dude walks in, bodybuilder type guy, mm -hmm. muscular. I always had good stamina because I used to run track and field long distance. Yes, sir. So I used to run 10 miles for practice every day. Yes, sir. So what happened was, he put me in this elevator, I went in this elevator, I didn't see nobody. Next thing you know, before the second door closed, boom, guy comes in, smack, hits the top floor, and it's on. Yes, he sir. turned around and just blasted me against the wall. Yes, sir. Boom, 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 boom. Now you gotta remember, I'm Goju Karate. I'm training hard. Yes, sir. Real hard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Real hard. Yes, sir. Okay? My karate was useless. Why do you say it was useless? Absolutely useless. I mean, just explain. Because I, I explained to you lot. because it was close quarter. Oh, uh, got you. That's that's what I, I was trained. I was training. I thought I was training to learn how to fight yes, in sir. karate, which I was. Right. Kamite, no hitting maki water, hands on, you know, getting my hands all callous, yes, you know, doing you and I maki water. Training hard, working out hard, yes, sir. ready to spar hard. We were, we were training with Doc Williams and, and, and the rest of these guys that, you know, there were no joke. Yes, sir. You know, you have to earn, earn your right to be there. Absolutely. And what happened was, in that elevator, there was no down block, middle block, reverse punt, front kick, side kick. This dude was grabbing me and bouncing me repeatedly off of the wall and punching me. Yes, sir. So there was no time or space for me to do the things that I learned to do. So I went got back. It. I got out of there because of one thing and one thing only. Stamina. Yes, sir. And I used to box, play box, a little bit of boxing, you know, wrestling. Mm -hmm. I was no, you know, no real skill street stuff. Yes, sir. And because of that knowledge and my stamina mm -hmm. is what made me get out of that situation. Because the guy literally got tired right, of right, trying right. to beat me. Gotcha. Got so you. when, you know the old saying, when you stop giving, it's time for you to get? Yes, sir. Teach. I learned how to block well mm -hmm. and protect myself well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then, when he started huffing and puffing, then I just started Your turn. You know, throwing blow. <laughs> yes, but it was no, not because I was some skillful guy. Right. Understood. He just burned himself out. Yes, sir. Got gotcha. you. Okay? okay? That's how I got, that's how. So what happened was, I went back to Professor Rico Guy, and I said, Professor, so I said, you know, this is what happened. And he said, oh, that's because that's close quarter. That's not 
karate is fighting, it's fun. Right. He goes, that's jujitsu. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's when I started to do my homework and realize that all the great masters in the founders back in the day, you know, Oyama, because they all knew close quarter jujitsu yes, and judo. That's correct. Good all of them. Yes, absolutely. That's right. But they didn't tell. They don't tell you that they when you walk through that. Right. <laughs> when you walk through the door. So I went through the door thinking I'm learning the street stuff. Right, right, right. But that wasn't what I was learning. Okay, so I have a lot of questions here. Ask me anything you want. So briefly, just give us an example. Talk about how Professor V's class was structured, and I'm sure, like you said, you're in the elevator, and the guy's just close to you. So you turn and it's an empty. You go up, it's an empty, and that's how you deal with it. So tell us how Professor V started to groom you with close quarter self-defense. Well, what happened was when I went, went after, that's when Sheila Howard said, come with me, actually, and took me down. He said, you need to see this. And that's when I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is what I'm looking for here. Yes, sir. This is what I want. Yes, sir. Stuff that would actually... I could actually use. Yes, sir. I wasn't worried about fighting. I didn't want to fight nobody. I wanted to hurt you, and I wanted to come out on top yes, sir. after I hurt you and, 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 and leave. So Professor V was in the hurt business. So Professor V, <laughs> when I seen what he was doing, it blew my mind because he's using different parts of the body right. that we wasn't using. Right. And right. what I noticed was what he was doing, he wasn't letting anything pass him. What I mean by that is he was striking from the closest point, yes, not sir. from the furthest point. Right, 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 right. He was using techniques the whole entire body. He was doing joint locks where we learned none of that. So I said, oh, okay, this is what I want. Now here's a funny story. After I made that decision, I looked at Professor V and I told him, that day, I'm signing up, I'm a lifer. Right. That day. A lifer. I said, I'm a lifer. He laughed in my face. If you know Professor V, he laughed and said, okay, okay, okay. He goes, you come back next week, I'll see you. Mm -hmm. You know, he only gave me that little touch and yes, said, you yes, come sir. back yes, next sir. week, yes, I'll see you. Yes. And he thought I was joking. And then right after that, I had a motorcycle accident. Oh, you had a motorcycle? I had, I had a mo motorcycle accident. And at that time, I broke my leg in five places and they told me, you'll never do martial arts again. Wow. And I literally, took me one year from being in the hospital, rehabbing, cast, below the knee, above yes, the knee, yes, a little bit above the knee, below the knee. Then I got back on a motorcycle once I could bend my knee, just out of to keep the fear away. Yes, sir. And I went to Professor Rico Guy's class on crutches. He told me, good to see you, because nobody seen me for eight months, since seven, eight months. Sit down, watch the class. And I used to travel from my house at the time on train to the dojo just to go watch class. Okay, three, four times a week. Yes, sir. When I went to Professor V's class, I went to sit down. He told me, what are you doing? I said, I'm coming to watch, sir. He said, how did you get here? I said, I took the train. He said, how are you gonna get home? I said, I'm taking the train. He said, well, you gotta learn how to work then because you look like a victim to me. Right, right, right. So he taught me wow. how to work with the crutches, yes, sir. on crutches, yes, sir. show me techniques, close quarter. When I went to Goju, they told me to have a seat. Got you. Got you. I couldn't Understood. reverse punch. Kick. In other words, whatever your condition is, we're going to teach you from your condition and you're going to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's when, that's when I said, hey, boom. You know, it's interesting. And I'm not going to turn this martial arts interview into a motorcycle interview, but I ride a motorcycle. Yeah. And last year, I had an accident and hurt my hip, hurt my shoulder, and my ankle. And the biggest thing for me, and I heard you say, when you were able to bend your knee, you got back on to overcome the fear. Yes, sir. And that's what I had to do. Because yes, sir. every time I got on the bike, if I saw a car moving towards me, that fear jumped in, Jump but right I had to overcome it. it. Yeah. And the martial arts is that. When you first come into the art, you got a lot of fear because you're dealing with people that's trying to take you off. Constantly. And uh, that's interesting to know. So now I know we, 
Not only do we share a name, James, now we're motorcycle. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. So Professor V told you that you look like a victim, so I have to train you so you can survive this train ride. Yes, sir. Bush, very good. Okay, okay. And All then, right. And then Bush. after that, and that's when we started the training and Professor V retired, and that's when I went with, out of that group who was there, who was training every Saturday, mm -hmm. I then made a decision that Professor V had semi-retired. Right. So then I went with Lou Ferrer, Professor Lou Ferrer, we know Professor Lou after that. The Little John was up in the, I think up in Harlem. Uh, Pop and Cowboy was up in the Bronx. Uh, Professor Danny Paolo was in Long Island City. So I went with Lou Ferrer, who was in Brooklyn. And that's okay. where I started the, my Vigitso, like after Professor I started with Professor V, Professor V retired, I stayed with Lou Ferrer until Lou Ferrer decided to do different things, and then I'll tell you later on how I got back to Professor V. Okay, all right, well let's let's talk about that. You trained with Lou Ferrer, and you start progressing, I'm sure, and who were some of your classmates? Lou Ferrer, yeah. in that class? Yes, sir. Yeah. We had Sensei Frank, Sensei Izzy. We had, who's legendary in that dojo, was Master Tim Harris. Master Tim, Sheon Tim, we call him. Sheon Tim and Mr. Bill. Those two guys were just incredible practitioners. Incredible practitioners. If you, you, you remember the movie, The Green Mile? Yes, sir. The yes, big sir. guy? Mm -hmm. Sheon Tim, he was like that. Oh, wow. Okay. He wore overalls, the same kind of overalls. Yes, he had that country strong. And he was the one who took me out of flash martial arts, flash vijitsu, because you know vijitsu very flash. Yes, sir. And he was the one who took me out of the flash into the method that started me on the mindset of the, the concept that I have now, which is just so straightforward, so straight direct. It was Sheon Tim who put me on that path because he was not about the flash. He was one of these guys that mastered, when you say master the basics, mm -hmm. he mastered the basics. And one day, you know, Professor Lou Ferrer, if you know him, very flashy. Yes. We were doing tournaments, we were winning tournaments left and right, tournament after tournament, we go to a tournament, everybody were taking the tournament for a second, third, for a second, third. So, you know, you start to think that you got this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to believe that you got this stuff. Yes, sir. So, Sheon Timmy, who was an interesting character because for the first year, damn near, I was in the dojo with Lou Ferrer and himself and Mr. Bill. He never said, he never showed me anything or never taught me anything mm. unless he was instructed to. Mm. And him and Mr. Bill would work out together every, after every class, and I would just sit and watch. Mm -hmm. And one day I said to him, well, uh, how come you never really uh, teach me anything? Mm -hmm. He said, because I don't got time to waste. Mm. He said, I see so many people come and go, I don't waste my time with those people. Yes, sir. He said, if, if, he goes, if, if Professor Lou, and he goes, if Sian Lou tells me to go work with you, and show you something, I'll yes, show you. Right. But after that, I walk away from you. Exactly. He goes, then I got zero time to waste people who are not gonna stay. Mm -hmm. So it, after he realized I was really dedicated, yes, sir. then him and Mr. Bill let me in their little circle. Gotcha. Where is he today? He's in Florida. Okay. Is he still teaching? I don't, and practicing I don't know if he's still teaching or practicing, but he's in Florida. And uh, all I can say is one of the great people in Virginia that nobody knows of. Mm. Okay. Well, let me let me ask you this before I get back to Professor B, which none of this is getting away from Professor B. Explain to me and the audience what is the difference between Virginia Rule, Virginia Teddy. And be honest, you just and give us a little history about the changes that Professor B made along the way. Okay, the difference is when I joined the system, it was Vijay So Lu. Gotcha. When I joined the system, yes, sir. All right, and that's what Lou Ferrer used to teach, mm -hmm. which is Vijay So Lu. Yes, sir. Before he, now as you know, uh, he's doing Kodakon. Yes. But before it was Vijay So Lu when we all 
That's what it was. Yes, sir. And that's the reason why I joined, and that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Okay? And so what happened was the V Jitsu Ru, Professor V told me, he goes, what I did, and this is one of the things that a lot of people don't know. So I'm gonna I'm glad that you're giving me this opportunity. Yes, sir. No, I appreciate it. Because you know, a lot of people think they know the story and they, they talk a certain, you know, their own version of the history. Yes, sir. But I spent when I say I spent hundreds of hours doing what we're doing now with Professor B. Yes, sir. I, I spoke to Professor B more than I trained with Professor B. Yes, sir. Understood. See? Understood. Yes, sir. And I asked him all the questions that you just asked. Professor, why this, why this, why that? Right. And Professor B never stopped training, right. never stopped creating. Yes, so this is Professor V's words, not mine. He said, when I was doing Vigiso K, he goes, I kept learning. And as I learned, it evolved into Vigiso Ru, and then Vigiso 75. And then he says, now I was not doing the Arnis part of the system the way I am now. So that's why the name the Arnis Jitsu I have and I use, it wasn't something I made up. Right. It was right. something when I started to teach after Professor Lou Ferrer moved on and started to do something else, I told him I am staying with the system I joined. Yes, sir. I didn't join, no disrespect to you, Professor Xi'an Lu. I didn't join Xi'an Lu Ferrer's system. I joined Professor V's system. Yes, sir. And if you choose to do something else, that's fine, but I'm sticking with Professor V says, okay, you just brought something to my mind and I'm, I'm going to ask the question yeah. because why do you think students of great teachers and why do masters leave their teacher and the system and go out and do what they were taught for calling something else? Do they realize that they're killing the system, that it's not, you're not growing the legacy? What, what's your feeling? Okay, now, like I said, when I speak, a lot of people don't like the way, what I have to say. It's okay? the truth, though. You're but, speaking the truth. But everything that, I, that I'm talking, I, I could back up. Yes, sir. Okay? That's what I want. Yes, sir. So I'm not blowing smoke. And a lot yes, of people think, oh, yeah, you know, oh, he just made up that name, or he just, so the reason why I broke down that story the way I did is because the name V Arnis Jitsu, when I started teaching, I asked Professor V, I told him, <coughs> Professor Lou Ferrer is moving at the time to New Jersey. He moved from Brooklyn to New Jersey. And I said, I'm not going to do, at the time he was doing a system, which very few people remember, called Joe Kai Jitsu Ru. Before he did the Kodakai. Yes, sir. Joe Kai Jitsu Ru. Yes, sir. Some people tell you, no, 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 such thing. don't exist. It exists, okay? So that's what he did when he was leaving, when he went to New Jersey, and I stayed with the v -Jitsu. And I didn't know what to do. I was not qualified to teach on my own like that. Right. I needed help. Yes, sir. I still wasn't where I needed to be. So I'm not a person that's afraid to ask for help. Yes, sir. So I said to Professor B, Xi'an Lu is leaving. I would like to stay and continue to do your system, but I need help. I said, so would you help me, one, teach your system? He said, of course, I got you. He goes, I will help you. And two, what name to use? And he wrote down in his book, I still got the book today, he wrote in the book, The Honest Demand. And then he crossed it out, and said, no, people won't understand what that is. That's Filipino. Mm -hmm. He said, use this name, V Honest Chitsa. And since 1984, that was the name I'm using. So let me let me get clear on this. It's not V Honest Jiu Jitsu, it's V Honest Jitsu. V Honest Jitsu. Bush, thank you. That's V that Honest Jitsu was, is the name he wrote on the book. 
And I took that, and with his help, that's when I started to have him come down to the dojo and go to his house and train with him every week. Yes, sir. Every week. Yes, sir. So I seen Professor V four or five times a week because he, as you know, used to come down. He used to vi visit when Worlds Collide, when, when Worlds Collide was down there. I was on 58 Caton Place at the time. And, uh, you know, that's how I just, we just started. And I would just ask all the questions because I didn't know, you know, okay. I wanted to make sure that I'll tell you exactly what I told him. And I don't say this in an egotistical way. Mm -hmm. I said, no one is going to know this system better than me. Bush. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, with that, many people have told me, and I've heard them say it, those who train with Grand Professor V, that Grand Professor V was a scholar, and he liked to document what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just coming on the mat, showing the technique and saying, hey, all right, do that. Right. He documented things, so he was like a scholar. How do you, how do you learn from somebody if you're not academically inclined? Like me, I'm visual. I'm visual. I'm very visual. I'm, very, I'm visual, just like you. You write it down, I need to see it. How do you deal with a master who likes to write it down and how did you receive his teachings that you wrote down? How, how, did, how did that go for you? Okay, uh, we two questions. You asked me a question before I never got a really chance, chance to answer, I'm gonna ask them both. Mm -hmm. Okay, about instructors, instructors that learn from their teachers and then go on and start their own thing and kind of leave the instructors, you know, to say, well, I got enough. Yes, sir. Okay? Professor V, and once again, this is not my words. This is him speaking, what, what he told me. Yes, sir. I asked him though that question. Professor, how do you feel about that? I said, so many guys, everybody wants your information, but people are taking your information, using your information, and some of them are not even giving him any credit for it. Right, absolutely, right. They're just using their information, and they wake up in the morning like if they discovered it while they were sleeping. <laughs> and it's like, okay, this is my stuff. Right. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? So I, when I didn't have any say, because I was just a white belt in the back of the room, because you remember how we used to be in the dojo, white belts line up in the back, black belts in the front, and you had to work your way to the front. Absolutely. So when I was in the back, I couldn't say nothing, but I could see. Yes, sir. And you remember. And I remember yes, and see how some of these people would treat Professor V. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at that, and I had no voice, and I'm just looking, and looking, and looking, and I didn't think it was right, but like I said, who was I? I was a nobody, yes, sir. right? So when I got <laughs> to the point where I could have a voice, I started to ask questions, yes, sir. okay? And I never felt good about that. Right. So when I had the opportunity to sit down with Professor, after our training one day, and he allowed me to talk with him and ask questions, I asked him that same question. And he said to me, he said, David, he said, it's okay. He said, it's okay, David, because I'm not finished yet. Mm. Got gotcha. you. They think they got it, David, but they don't have it. He gotcha. said, I'm not finished yet. He said, so therefore, what they're taking, David, or they think that they're walking away with. He goes, you know, David, they only got a little bit. Wow. I got so much more. Okay? Yes, sir. Because I asked him specifically because, as you know, Dr. Powell was so famous. Well, more well-known than Professor V. I had people who told me, who met me and see me wearing a Vigitzo jacket or something and say, say to me, oh, I know that guy. He studied with Professor Moses Pop. Mm. So some people used to have it in verse yes, that Professor V studied with Moses Pop. Mm. That I never heard. But yes, oh, I, I can imagine. I've yes, heard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because people, that's the story of people. Right. And I would have to correct people. Because it's only because the magazines are popular. Yes, sir. You no. Know? So what happened was I asked Professor about that. 
And he was somewhere he's very popular, David. He's very, he's very popular. So, you know, I like to keep a low profile, David. So people, you know, people don't know me. So he was good with that because he was happy that the system, the knowledge, his information was being pushed forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he really appreciated that. Yes, sir. You know, that part of it. You know, I, I want to jump in because I, I don't yeah. want to make this like an interview. I want it to be a conversation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You just said something and it just messed me up because I interviewed Doc several months before he left. And we were talking about the same thing. And he said, James, they left the table with the appetizer and didn't realize that I was in the kitchen preparing a four course meal. Yes, sir. I had so much more to give. Yes, sir. And they saw something that was shiny. They yes. thought it was a diamond and they went to pawn it. It's funny. He, he said, yes, he told me that too. Us. He told, he said, he said it to me. I went to his house up in Vermont. Yes, sir. And sat with him. That's one of my questions. I, he, I, I he, got you on that. He, I don't he, want you to jump there. No, no, no. He, I got he, you. he said that to me too. <laughs> man, and when you said Professor V said it, it's like, man. And he said they took my system and they ran with it and then they called it another name. Like, what's wrong with some of this? And Doc used to say, I'm not like these other guys going out here, oh, I created my own system. He said, I went to my teacher and I requested a blessing for him to bless me to do my own thing. I didn't just jump up and say I'm doing my own thing. Yes, sir. And even when he gave me permission, I still was by my teacher's side and was with him. Yes, sir. I always called him my teacher. Yes, sir. In fact, the more famous I became, the more I spoke his name, yes, sir. Professor B. So I just wanted to put that out there in connection with what you just said, because I felt what you said, but I had no idea that Professor B said it. That's why I'm talking to you, because I, I don't know Grand Professor B. Yeah. I don't know what he said, what he taught, but you do. Yeah, so that's why that's the really conversation did. that he took. Yes, sir. And he said that, and he always respected the fact. And in fact, it's funny, because when I did, when, when I went up to uh, see Professor Powell's, one of the first things that he told me was when he came back to me, when he told me on Atlantic Avenue, when I was on Atlantic and Court Street, when he came back to New York, first thing he came to me, said, you know, I heard about what you're doing. I heard about what you're doing. He goes, I've been following you. And he said, thank you for taking care of my teaching. He once told me, he said, James, it got to the point where I couldn't protect and defend Professor D like I needed to because I didn't want to cause tell the students. Yeah. So I had to leave. He said, you never heard me say that I am the number one student of Professor V or I am the number one man in V Gypsy. He said, that's David James's thing. He said, I just care about my teacher being taken care of. And he contacted me and requested that I go to Florida with him to an event that you invited him to. Yes, sir. I couldn't make it, but yes, he called me from there. He told me how fabulous the place was, the palm trees, everything. He said, James, you missed a good one. So I know that he respected and, and honored what you did. And he was he felt comfortable that somebody was there that had the same caring spirit for Grand Professor V that he had. Uh, so I, I'm, I, I'm saying that from Sanukis to you. Oh, no, and I, he said it to me. Appreciate that, but yes, uh, you know, for me, that's actually how I got to become, as you want, if you if you want to call it, the head of the system. I got a question for you. Go ahead. But I don't want to jump there yet. Okay. But then we have the conversation. You brought it up. So time goes on. You learn it from Professor V. You said that you talked, you spoke with him more than you trained with him, and I can relate to that because I was with Doc for four days at a time, breakfast, lunch, dinner, training, breakfast, lunch, dinner, 2 a.m. 2 in the morning, traveling with him. So I had a, I asked him a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So before we talk about what Professor V did with you, you were with, you were with uh, Sheon Lou Ferrer, mm -hmm. but he went to do something else. What? What, why did he do that, which caused you to stay with Professor V or, or Egyptian? What happened? Okay, what truly happened 
and I would let, maybe if you interview Lou one day, he will tell you, but what truly happened was politics. And that's, politics messes martial arts up. Ego and politics destroys, destroys the martial arts. Yes, sir. Okay, ego and politics. Yes, sir. And that's, once again, ego and politics. That's the reason why I'm here. Professor B didn't pick me because I was the greatest student. I was the most loyal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody else, I got it by default because everybody else decided not to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Grab his information, take what they wanted, left, you know, put their own name to it. I wasn't interested in that. Right. Right. Okay? And when Lou Ferrer at the time left, it was because of politics. Okay? And I will let him tell the story, but the real story is, I'll show you something. First of all, you see, you can't see it on the camera, but you do see it, and I want you to bear witness to it. This little brown case is Professor B's case. Can you bring it here? Okay. You can put it in your lap, don't see it. Okay, <laughs> this, this case is Professor V's case. These are all Professor V's notes, all of Professor V's documents, all of Professor V's writings. That's a lot of notes. On how we have the system. <laughs> you see some of these books are 40 years, 50 years old. If you don't know, Professor V used to run a bookstore, and you said he documented everything. Yes, sir. Yes, everything. Sir. Yes, sir. And if and those of you who know me, I document everything. Yes, sir. You know, I don't teach off the top of my head. I don't come on the floor and just, we're, we're, this is what we're doing today. <laughs> okay? And I'll tell you the reason why I, I do that. So these notes for people who say, oh, well, you know, James don't, oh, he, he just, Professor just gave him the system and he ain't really, he don't really, you know, he's not the real inheritor of the system. Well, these notes are his. This was given to me when he died. Not only from him, but from his daughter. His daughter's a Supreme Court judge. Okay, Supreme Court judge. I have legal right to Professor V's name. So I am using the name legally by power of attorney from his daughter to me. Yes, sir. Yes. So a lot of the students who are running out here using Professor V's name, technically they don't have a legal right to do so. Mm. Understood. She legally gave me permission to use the name with a warning. She said, I never want to see my father's name come across my desk. She's a Supreme Court judge. Yes, sir. So watch who you train and train people wisely. Yes, sir. Yes, if, sir. It, if it comes across my desk and you're training the wrong people, I will take the name from you. Wow. Yes, sir. So, and these are all his papers. Yes, sir. Okay, and we have another book that's a thousand pages long. There's only two copies of it. I have one, and Chianza Rillo is holding a copy of it. Literally everything in the system written out from A to Z. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a thousand pages. Yes, sir. In a book. Just crazy thing. Like, look like a freaking telephone book. So, so that is in line with my question about him being a scholastic and documented thing. So, so you have that. So, here is what I'm talking about. Just so, in case you ever come across, what did I say up top? Jokai Jitsu Lu, yes, Professor Lou Ferrer, wow. Shion Lou Ferrer, 1985. I see it. 58 Caton Place. And that's, 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 My first dojo was 58 Caton Place. That's Shion Lu, yes sir. Right, when I took over from him. So now, Ain't nobody can say, oh, well, no, 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 that's not the way it went down. <laughs> How did I get 58K in place dojo if Lou Ferrer was still there? I took it over because he left. And if you notice, just so you could see who the instructors are in the bottom. Gabriel Negron. Sensei David James. Right? Yes, sir. Right? And Tim Harris. Tim Harris, right here. Tim yes, Harris. Vice President. Is Vice President. Yes, sir. Just so you could see what I'm telling you. Is the truth. Yes, sir. Okay? Bush. And the date on this is 1985. Bush. Okay? Bush. So, and here's a picture 
Uh, you probably will remember this event, but this is a picture of the dough of me and the first sign of Vijitsa, the very first sign where we have the name Vianis Jitsa. Let, 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 let everybody see this. That's the sign. <laughs> The very first sign of V on his jitsu. This is That's history. Was it. A little piece, a little, have little, you, little. Have you ever shown sign. this in the public before? Never seen it. Nobody ever seen it. Wow. Before. Okay? Wow. And that was the dojo. And everybody know me from my dojo. So just so you understand, I've been teaching full time since 1984. Bush. And this was the dojo after I redid the dojo. Because I took it, I redid all my dojos. I do it, I redo them nice. You know, all my schools are nice and not. When I took it, I did the same thing I do with everything. Do the walls, the floors, the mats, everything. Yes, sir. That's yes. the dojo. Yes. You remember this event. This is when Dr. Powers came back in 1990. He mm -hmm. came back to New York from the land. If you remember that event that we had in Brooklyn. I down think, on Atlantic Avenue. I think I have a, a video clip of some of it and he was referring to you as Shihai, talking yeah. to you the whole time he was yeah. teaching. And Professor Lee walked in, he greeted him, and then he went over. And he went over. Yes, sir. And that's, that's him, Lamar Thornton, Gosh. Professor V. This is the first time they've seen each other in years since and he came let's, back. Let's show it. Because this is First history. time they've seen each other in years. We appreciate you sharing this. This is exclusive information. Us, from somebody who was there. And that's when we were on Atlantic Avenue, right? Remember, guys? That was wow. 1986, 87, wow. right? 86, 87? Something of that nature. Wow. So. Okay, well, now you just, now I'm going right into it. I'm going to go right into it. It's, I'm, I'm going to hit you with a few questions. Mm -hmm. I don't even need the notes now. When did. Grand Professor V named you the inheritor of the system. Where did he do it? Was it documented? Who witnessed it to bear witness to what took place? And how did you feel at the time when it was handed to you? And what was the opposition and the envy and jealousy and the politics that took place? If you can remember all of them. I can remember. Okay, yes, sir. Real simple. First of all, how did I feel? I gave it back. What do you mean? I told him no. Wow. It was on Atlantic Avenue. Gave me the certificate. In fact, that picture on the wall there is when he's handed it to me the second, the first time on Atlantic Avenue. Tell me why you said no. Because I was just happy to be down. Hush. I just wanted to be on the map. Yes, sir. Understood. Okay? Understood. And at the time, the politics was so deep. Lou Ferrer, at the time, that's why he left, because politics was crazy. Because here's what happened. People who befriended Professor V and was, got close to him, so Professor V thought that you were really with him, even though you might have been in another system, and Professor V did not understand, I'm gonna put it this way, because this is the only way I know how to put it. Yes, sir. He did not understand the business of martial arts. Yes, sir. The business. Understood. Of martial arts. Mm -hmm. So, at the time, Chris Colombo, who was with Master Little John Davis, still is. I'm okay, sure. still is. Good friend of mine, good Chris. He was at the time fifth on. Mm -hmm. At the time. Yes, sir. Professor V promoted him to sixth on. Yes, sir. My school, and I'm going around. Busting my behind, just teaching his system. Yes, sir. Lou Ferrer, at the time, was Vija Saru. Working hard, going around, pushing Professor V's system. Yes, sir. Just V Gypsum. Yes, sir. And it was damn good at it. Yes, sir. Everybody know that. Yes, sir. Lou in his prime was, was you know, it was what it was. Yes, sir. Some people didn't like him, but he could hold his own. Yes, sir. So what happened was, after Professor V, because did not understand martial arts, business, he promoted other people's students to a higher level Got you. than their instructor, Got you. which pissed some people off. Yes, sir. Yes, okay? Sir. 
Because he didn't do it to be out of spite. He was showing appreciation right. for their loyalty to him. I understand. Okay? Yes, sir. And, and here's the real reason that nobody knows. He did it because he was afraid that nobody was going to carry on the system. Woo! Because there was nobody to carry on his system. I get emotional. Yes, sir. I'm going to talk about it. I'm emotional just hearing. Okay? Because all these guys was using his stuff and nobody, nobody was really had his name on the wall. Right, gotcha. They were doing their stuff, putting their name to it, and he just wanted somebody clearly to carry on his system. You know. And it, that's why he did it. And because of that, I do not blame Professor Louis Shiano at the time. He got extremely angry. Okay? Other instructors, I don't know if so, okay, Little John got angry because he did it. I can't speak for him. I don't know. Right. But he got angry. Yeah. Okay? And that led to things happen. Sorry, people started breaking off. Yes, I didn't give a damn. I was there for the information. I got my behind kicked, nearly died in the elevator. So I don't give a damn what degree I have or what rank I have. Keep teaching. Yes, sir. That's all I care about. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. So, afterwards, then a whole bunch of stuff started, then stuff went crazy at that point. This is in 86, 87. I just kept on doing my thing. Then all these other guys started drifting away. And who's left? Lou Ferrer wasn't there doing Regis no more. Chris Columbus was off doing whatever he did. He got what he wanted. And I don't say that in a bad way, right, right. but got what he wanted. There was another gentleman training at his house. Few people were, got what they wanted, and they all left the old man again. And who was there? Me and my guys that you see here today. Yes, we were still there, yes, just grinding, yes, doing our thing. So when he gave it to me, you know, I told him, Professor, not necessary. Happy to be done. Okay? Right. Right. And then when it came to a situation where they raised our rent and me being naive again, not understanding Manhattan versus <laughs> Brooklyn. Right, right, that's a big difference. Huge difference. <laughs> when they said they're gonna raise our rent, I said, well, they raised us to Manhattan now. Right. I said, to hell with that. I said, we might as well go to Manhattan. And then at that point in time, I started looking for schools in Manhattan. Right. And then I found the place I found on uh, 25 Park Place. And when I showed it to everybody, they thought I was out of my damn mind. Mm -hmm. And I said, this system is so good. It deserves to be on the level with Oyama and Tiger Shuma. Right. Right. We're gonna play on that level. Yes, sir. And I believe the information was that good mm -hmm. that as long as I kept learning, as long as I had Professor V teaching me, right. and I kept learning, and I stayed humble, and I worked hard, mm -hmm. that the people would see it and respect it. Yes, sir. And we'll be able to survive. Yes, sir. Where everybody thought I was out of my damn mind. Mm -hmm. Everybody. And that's a whole other story in itself. Right. Right. Okay? Right. And then what I did was to show Professor V, after I made the commitment to the school, to get in that school, I said, now I gotta double down on my training. Yes, I gotta be better. Right. I gotta really understand what this system is. Yes, sir. I made, I had in my mind, I said, you know what? I'm gonna show Professor V, not through just working out on the mat and wearing his patch and doing seminars and, 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 and tournaments. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show him, not words, physically, show him by the financial commitment that we're gonna put out there, mm -hmm. and by visually him seeing that when he's gone, his system will survive. Gotcha, gotcha. So that, if you remember, as you see those lights, it says, be honest, just a Professor V's 
be honest with you. So right. yes, they sir. were up in my school in Park Place, and the day we had our grand opening, he came up the elevator, the place was pitch black. The only thing he seen and everybody seen was the lights the that light. said Professor V's, not David James, right. not anything else. Right. Professor V's, V on his chest. Yes, sir. And yes, that's, sir. I did it for him. Yes, sir. To let him know that when you're gone, look at this commitment, look at the size of this school, that we're not going nowhere. Right. We're not changing the name. Right. We're not drifting off into some other thing. Right. You will be remembered. I've been there to Park Place twice. Beautiful place. Beautiful. So take us into how he named you the inheritor, how you felt. Well, you gave it back, but now here he is Second again. Time. How did you feel? Who witnessed it and was it documented? And what was the what obstacles did you have to overcome? receiving this great responsibility. Okay, first thing, who witnessed it? We had, the second time, we had, I don't know if you remember Mike Black, number three, Mike Black? Professor Michael Professor Black. Professor Michael Black? He came to my door in right. 1998. And he was alive then. Yes. You know, before he passed. Right. Good friend. Yes. Mike Black was there. Mm -hmm. And I want to give him that respect because Absolutely. I had a lot Absolutely. of respect for him. Absolutely. Okay, Mike Black, it was uh, Aaron Banks. Yes. Mike DePasquale Jr. and Sr. Father and son. Father yes, and son. Master Carlisle Griffin yeah. was there. We had, how many people, Shiana? I'm well. It was ridiculous uh, the amount of people that were there. And this Shiana is at Howard, Park Place. This is at Park Place. Okay. Is it Howard? It was Sean Howard. In fact, Master Corson was there. Anthony Richards was there at the time. He wasn't Grandmaster Anthony Richards. It was Sean Anthony Richards was there. It, we had about 250 people there. This, the, wow. Right? About the, to the, at the opening. We did it at the opening. So about 250 people were there, 100, something like that. You know, we did it at the grand opening. Yes, sir. And then Professor V made an announcement that day that wasn't received too well from some of the people who were around a little longer or felt that they should have been, they should have been, you know, the head of the system. Right. Professor V made an announcement that day, from this day forward, all promotions will go through David. Mm. And he's the head of the system now, he's taking over and running the system. And that picture, also, if you look at it, there's Deepa Swap Senior there, right. and I have other photos with, there were so many instructors that were there you know, and it's documented in that particular photo and others that were there. But as far as the opposition, you know, everybody uh, had their opinion. You know, some people feel like, oh, it should have been, it should, you know, I should have been heavier, I've been around longer. I had people tell me, oh, you know, you're just the baby of the system. Oh, who do you know? I've been in Vigisto before you, right, before right, me, right. all of that kind of stuff. And I get it. Right, right, right. You know, I got people still talking crap today about, Oh, how does James got 200 black belts and I'm in the system before him? Right, gotcha. I can explain it if you really want to know. Right, right. Okay? But here's what I inherited. Hard work. Mm. That's all I inherited. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Because here's the reality. The way we learned was you got on the map. What was taught today, you worked on today. You came tomorrow with different information. Yes, sir. And you just worked. Right. And you just got down, you know, tip for tap. Everybody flowed. Bam, 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 bam. Different technique. Hush. I hope you enjoyed part one. Part two is already done. We want to give the audience the opportunity to check out part one. And then part two will be posted soon. Thanks again. Eye to eye, heart to heart. Hush.